All right. Hey there, Dragon Ball Infinity. I am your DBI admin, Iken Bon, and this is going to be another video for online video academy for new builders, uh, new and old, I suppose. Um, this video is going to focus a little bit more on mobiles or mobs in the game, uh, which are monsters, creatures, shopkeepers. Um, basically, every NPC that you've ever run into in Dragon Ball Infinity is what we call a mob. Um, and they are perhaps one of the most important and most important aspects of the game in terms of being a builder. Um, and also one of the most complicated. Uh, they are, depending on how deep you really go, uh, the mobs of your areas are really going to define what is interesting or unique about those areas. Um, people will remember certain characters that you might make as you're building mobs, and <coughs> and ultimately your your area is going to be designated whether it's a good or a bad area based on the characters and the story that is present uh, and, and made possible through those characters or enemies, villains, etc. Um, before we get started though, um, I'm going to just throw in like a, a really small tip uh, and a, another kind of building philosophy. Um, if you're looking at my screen right now, you're, you're seeing my internet browser and what I have open. And you're going to notice that I, I have my, my client that uh, you've seen in prior videos perhaps, uh, which is <coughs> just the one that I, I use to access the game uh, because of my operating system. And then I've got some music that I'm playing. And um, when I'm building, I always go for something like this, uh, just like symphonic, mu symphonic music, uh, just something that's not going to cause a major distraction. Um, I think there's been actual studies that say that you, you concentrate better with this sort of music on. And then I don't have any other browser tabs open. There's, there's one for some room descriptions uh, for this. <coughs> For this area that we're going to be working in, but um, and excuse my coughing, I'm, I'm I've been pretty sick for a while, but I'm trying my best here. But uh, <coughs> there's a uh, these room descriptions, uh, just every everything that I'm going to be using, that I'm going to be working with, that's that's what I have open, and I don't have anything else open because I don't want I don't want any distractions when I'm building, and that can help you just stay focused and help you really really get to work which is uh which is important because if you if you become distracted you lose momentum and momentum is important as a build, as a builder so we're going to go ahead and <coughs> log it back into the game .net port 4000 right and Here's our title screen. And we're going to go ahead and log in. And we should already be logged in to our, um, to our proto area. I'm going to go ahead and put on the do not disturb flag. Um, and that's just so that no one bothers us while we're trying to make this video. <laughs> now, we have a lot to talk about when it comes to mobs. There is so much to know about them. There are so many programs. There are so many, so many things that a mob can do, and and how the game itself can interact with these types of characters in the game. These are the enemies that we're going to face. You know, they're going to be the uh, the monsters that our players are going to be power level gaining against. There are narrators for any of our stories and our quests. There are also just kind of the, the random NPCs, the shopkeepers that run around. Um, or, uh, you know, a, a lot of mobs might not even be very useful to fight in our game. But we're going to go through... We're in the process of making a few mobs. Now, if we take a look around this little area that I've built here, this is kind of an inn or a tavern 
for a Kanatsu city called Lacuna. And I'm uh, just going to take a look at the uh, the room descriptions are very simple. A warm entrance hall bids you welcome from the cold mountain air that lies beyond. The bar room is spacious and its ceiling's high. A crackling fire has been built within the great stone hearth at the center of the lodge, and a stack of cut rosewood logs have been laid beside it for guests to feed when the flames dwindle. Long tables and benches made of birch wood are scattered throughout the hall and provide seating to, taver to the tavern's many patrons. So, <coughs> we've got kind of a, a very homely atmosphere here. Uh, there's fires that are burning, there are long tables, it's spacious, it's a welcome retreat from the cold mountain air. And again, as I discussed in the first building video, the Building 101 discussing room edit or R edit command, your, your room descriptions and the names for your rooms can help you really decide what sort of mob should be in this area. And as we go into this, I, w I want you guys to understand, again, this building academy, I'm trying to make better builders than I've ever been before. We're, we're not just going to make something easy and small. We're not just going to make some NPC that's going to be shoved off in the corner. We're, we're going to give them programs that are interesting and unique because... Again, kind of this new era of building, and this is this is really only something that I've been doing, but it's something that I've been very slowly seeding into the game, whether or not players realize it, is that these these minor characters, these minor mobs, even though they might not be influential to characters on our MUD, even though they might not provide a lot of power level gain, what they can do just by existing and just by running around in our environments is that they can create a sense of time and place, and it can create immersion, which is kind of what we're going for. So, <coughs> this is a Kanatsu city. We've got our little bar and this little tavern, and it needs it needs someone to run it, doesn't it? It it needs somebody to run around inside this bar and serve drinks. So let's make a waitress. And you guys should see now a text edit box has just popped up on the screen here. And this is just so that you can see exactly how I'm going to uh, work on this particular uh, this particular waitress. Um, now, the first thing that we need to do, though, before we can make her, uh, and we'll just say it's a her, is that we need to look at our mob list. Now, this is, again, one of the first... Uh, commands that you're probably ever going to have access to as a builder and the M list command or mobile list or mob list um, is going to show you the the mobs that you've created in your area on the far left here you're going to see the mobs venom and again just like rooms all mobiles in the game have venoms and then you're going to see the name. Now the name for a mob is a little bit different than a room. Uh, the name is how players are going to be able to interact with that mob. And your first mob for every area is always going to be called the first mob. And then a newly created first mob is their short description. And that's just kind of a default. You can always actually, you can use this first mob, but there's probably, I would imagine there's hundreds of first mobs in Dragon Ball Infinity by now because most people don't ever edit that one. <clears throat> now, as you can see, I've already created several mobs for this area before we've gotten started. For instance, uh, 5,000 or 50,001 is the mob. Balaman Kanatsu Smith Forge. And then you can see his short name is Balaman. <coughs> Similarly, below that, we've got Mob 50002, which is a Kanatsu Loom Old Seepstrance Loom. So this this first section that I'm calling the name, these are the the keywords that players can use to interact with that mob. For instance, if they were to type a social and then one of these keywords and the mob is in the room that they're standing in it's going to fire and <coughs> that mob may or may not react depending on their disposition 
which is something we can actually set. But uh, it's very important that you choose certain unique names, especially once we get into the quest section of the game. Now you can kind of see an example of this here with the mannequins. Uh, mobs 50,005 through 50,015. Their first name is mannequin underscore one. And the reason that that is kind of important is that if we want to make specific programs that target just these mobs and we want to be absolutely certain that that name, that keyword, is specific to that mob, we need to do something like this. We need to create we need to create a keyword in their name that that is specific to them and them alone. <coughs> and again, I apologize for my coughing. It's just nothing I can really do about that right now. So, we have mobs that are going all the way up to 50,020 right now, which means that our waitress, she needs to have a mob V number of 50,021. So now again, this is this is kind of how I build. I have a text edit or a notepad file that I keep open and at the ready and I build the entire mob all at once. And I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to do that. So for instance, uh, we're going to type m create 50,000 21, right? Because that's our mom. Uh, that's the VNUM that she needs to be. She's going to be number 50,021. And she is a Kanatsu woman. She's a waitress. And we can go ahead and add some descriptions to her. She's wearing an apron. Uh, she's got, let's say, blonde hair. Blonde hair. Okay, so Kanatsu woman, waitress, apron, blonde hair, and let's go ahead and just give her a name. We'll call her um, Talia. That's her name. So now her name is Talia. So we've, with just this command, and again, kind of in the background, you're going to see some log commands, you're going to see some admin channels. Um, just kind of ignore those while we're working on some things. So just that first line is going to actually create the mob. And now the next line, we're going to M set her. Now, M create, mob create, is how we create a mobile in the game. But if we want to edit a mobile that we've already created, then we need to use the M set command. So mobile set. And you're, you're going to see this kind of repeated in other, um, other aspects of our building, but M set is one of the most important most important building commands that you're going to ever have access to. This is how you're going to actually create and edit mobs that are in the game. So, because our Kanatsu woman now has a very specific name, uh, we're going to say, you know, Talia. So we're going to M set Talia, and we're going to make her short name. Now, short stands for short name. Now, when I showed you that list of, and I'll I'll kind of flip back to it, kind of go back here. As we discussed before, this character, Balamond, that's its short name, right? So that first line that we've written, the M create, and then Kanatsu, woman, waitress, apron, blonde, Talia, that's the name. Those are the keywords. So, for instance, with Balamond, Balamond's keywords are Balamond, Kanatsu, Smith, Forge. So... Talia's keywords are Kanatsu Woman, Waitress, Apron, Blonde, Talia. And now we're going to actually make the game call her Talia. So M set Talia short Talia. Oh, I misspelled there. Talia. Now we need to create a long description for Talia. So we're going to M set her mobile set Talia long description. Now, for a long description, if we flip back to our game here, I'm going to show you an example of a long description. Uh, once we enter into this room, you can see uh, there is already a mobile here. I'm just going to highlight it very briefly. 
Um, but it's na it says a portly Kanatsu innkeeper wearing an apron is here refilling glasses and delivering food for the patrons of the bar. That's the long description. That's what players see whenever they enter the room. And depending on if they may or may not see the short description, but the long description needs to include <coughs> our keywords. So we need to try to include as many of these keywords as we possibly can that I'm highlighting here on the screen for you. So, Talia's long description would be a blonde-haired Kanatsu woman is here filling drink orders for the patrons of the Root and Mineral. Of the tavern. We'll say the tavern. We won't get that specific. Now, I personally have, again, this is just personal taste. You don't have to do this, but I have been, in my building, I have been um, adding color codes to the long descriptions. So, kind of like what you see with the Kanatsu Innkeeper here on the screen, we're going to go ahead and enter and green. We've misspelled Kanatsu. We'll do that to highlight the fact that it's Kanatsu. So if nothing else, that one keyword is lit up very brightly for them, right? And then we always, always end a color code in Andia. Again, I'm going to repeat this every single time we talk about it. Anytime you add a color code to this game, you're going to enter an and D at the end of it. That is just going to make everyone's life so much easier. All right, so we've created a long description for our, our Talaya, for our Kanatsu waitress. Uh, we'll, even say, we'll even say instead of woman, you know, that, that's not so descriptive, but she is a waitress. Is here filling drink orders for the patrons of the tavern. All right, so we've created a short description, created a long description. The next thing we knew is get a little bit more specific about this character. We know that she's female, she's a woman, so mset Talia sex 2. Now there are three sexes in the game. There are male, female, and other. Male is coded or hard-coded as 1, female is hard-coded as 2, and other is hard coded as three, and other is just going to use the they them description. And um, I mean, feel free to add as many non non binary characters as uh, you like, or whatever gender that you see your characters as, of course. But these are the three that we have access to. Okay, so we've created uh, Talia's sex. We've identified that she is a female. Now. This doesn't come up very often. There's really only a few reasons that you would ever actually use this, but you can set a mob's race. So M set Talia race Kanatsu. Now, as I say this, I'm gonna go ahead and warn you that the the game doesn't these commands don't seem to recognize all of the races in the game and what I mean by that is some of the newer races that have been added later on like Kanatsu or Kanassian um, they're not actually hard-coded like this there's actually a number value that's assigned to it and I'll show you that a little bit later um, but if you're the only time that this is ever going to actually matter is if if a player actually looks like uses the look command like for instance if they had typed look to Laya, then it will display their race. But for the most part, players don't really investigate that deeply, and you can actually add a description to your mobs so that, so that when they look, they actually get a description, which um, can alleviate this sort of problem. Um, but just so you know, this, this is a command. The, the times where it's really going to come in handy is if you want to create the race Android. I find that it's the only reason to really include this in your building 
is if you want to make the race android because that affects certain things in the game like whether or not a bio android can get their absorb gains against it for instance and whether or not it's going to automatically have things like key absorb um, so if whenever you're using this particular inset command with the race the only one that actually really matters is whether or not you're setting it as an android everything else eh, you know do your best but and, and again, we want to be as deliberate as possible, but there's just some things that are outside of our control and some things that aren't worth fretting that much over. But I mention it specifically for the androids. All right. And then, so we've, we've got Talia's short description, her long description, her sex, and her race. Now, I'm going to... I'm, I'm going to kind of skip over this for just right now because you guys don't... There, there's a lot to talk about in this category. But we need to set some flags for Talia. So M set Talia flags. And there's a number of different flags that we can give a mobile that can really influence what it does. But for the purposes of this, I'm just gonna use this as a as a chance to like show you just how much we can we could do to to do to evoke exactly what Talia is, right? So she's a waitress, so she's probably moving pretty quickly through this tavern, right? She's running. And what the running flag does is it means that the, the mob is actually going to move between rooms much faster than other mobs would do. Um, if, you, if you don't have any room flags that would prevent a mob from moving into rooms, they'll kind of wander around. But Talia is a waitress. She's running. Right? She's she's moving pretty quick through this place. She needs to take care of these patrons. <coughs> now, we also probably don't want someone to kill Talia. Um, she seems like a nice girl. We don't we don't want anybody to energy blast her face off, right? So let's go ahead and make her a pacifist as a pacifist as well. The pacifist flag is going to prevent anyone in, from actually attacking and killing Talia. So we don't have to worry about our waitress getting her head blown off. She makes minimum wage and some tips. She doesn't deserve people cutting her head off, right? She's a good girl. And then and then for Talia, that's pretty much all the flags that we really need to worry about. So we're going to go down uh, another line. And the next thing that we're going to set, as far as Talia is concerned... Is we have a short description, long description, her sex, her race. We've got her flags. We probably no, we're we're probably good here. We've this this is really as much as we need to make to get this waitress in the game. And we'll take a look at her in just a moment and show you. So I've written all this out. You know that took. Just a few moments, I'm explaining everything, otherwise this would be pretty fast, right? So, we just, from our notepad file, we just copy, and then I'm going to hide the capture window for you guys. <coughs> we go back to our game, we paste, actually we're, we're going to move one room, and then we'll paste. Alright, and as you can see, all of those commands just fired into the game all at once. We've we've already made this mobile. We can see her now. Here's Talia. Here's our friend Talia, our waitress. Let's go ahead and use the mstat command. So you can see me typing this here. mstat. And then we're going to specify what we're going to mstat. So mobile statistics. And her name is Talia. So now... What you're seeing on your screen now, there, there's kind of a lot to take in here. Um, and this is kind of behind the curtain level stuff. If any of you guys have ever been a dungeon master for any game whatsoever, um, th this is the, these are the kind of stats that players do not need to know about. And it's a good idea not to mention them. But as you can see, there's a lot that we can interact with. I'm going to start highlighting some things and just pointing out certain features. So 
here's the mobile name that we've already discussed. You know, her keywords are Kanatsu, Woman, Waitress, Apron, Blonde, and Talaya. Here's her Venom, which is 50,021. Here's her sex. Remember, sex is identified by an energy of one through three. One is male, two is female, three is other. This designates what room Talia is. There's This can matter. Um, usually you want to use this in conjunction with other much more complicated programs. Uh, the count will tell you how many of this mobile is in this room. And then this actually keeps track of how many times that mobile has been killed. And there's there's some interesting programs that you can make with that particular statistic. Um, then we have Talia's stats. Unfortunately, she only has a power level of one. Um, again, she's a pacifist, and we're kind of treating her as a, an NPC that we don't want the players to kill. These stats would be adjusted based on her power level. And then she's actually got some pretty high potential. So our little Talia has a potential of two. Now mobs have a higher chance to have potential, of course. Um, and then it's going to show her level. Her level kind of corresponds to um, certain if checks. And technically, every player character in the game actually has a level. Um, whenever you go up in rank, you're actually going up in level. You don't really need to know too much about that. You can set Talia's HPs, so she only has 100 by default, but you can actually make that higher. Now, as you saw, her race right now is listed as Saiyan. She's not a Saiyan, she's a Kanatsu. But, like, as, as I was saying before, the, the race doesn't really affect the mobiles in the game unless they fall into some of the original races that had been set up when Dragon Ball Saga had been implemented. Now, you can get it to say Kanatsu, but you have to play with these numbers. Instead of entering Mset Race Kanatsu, if we knew the exact number for it, we could just type in the number, like Mset Race number, and it would make her a Kanatsu. I, I don't have... I would have to figure that out. There's not a help file, unfortunately, that I can show you that will designate all of the different races for that statistic. There's some other stuff. We don't really need to worry about kind of the rest of this right now. Um, I'll just very briefly talk about it. There, There is an armor stat. Uh, this can define... This doesn't work. Don't, don't try to inset the armor. Uh, hit roll. You can actually increase the hit roll, like the actual damage die rolls that uh, mobs deal. Alignment. It doesn't matter. Energy. It doesn't matter. Mobs never run out of energy. We're getting spammed. Uh, damage percentage. This this is armor, more or less. You can set the amount of damage that a mob receives. So the lower this number is, the less damage they receive whenever they're in combat. That's useful for things like super mobs and if you want to create boss mobiles for areas. Um, but it's not something that... Be, be careful with it. You can make mobs pretty invulnerable. You really have to kind of have played with these stats a lot to figure out where like that sweet spot is. Um, so just be careful if you are going to be messing with the damage percent. Rage. Uh, this is actually, this is Saiyan Rage. I'm pretty sure. I've never actually messed with that one too much. Damage roll. Again, you can change, you can change how much damage they actually deal whenever they roll damage. Um, which could be every round of combat, by the way, so be very careful. Um, Wimpy, you can actually make mobs flee. Some of you guys, you might have been through uh, Mount Auric, uh, where the 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 I believe that the the lowly icer citizens, like the the peasants, basically will flee from you. Um, I really, really don't recommend that you have them do that. It's actually better to just have them have a an actual <coughs> an actual program that checks for their whatever their HPs are at, and then have them use the flee command, because otherwise they they start yelling whenever the players return. It's it's bad. Um, position. This is a hard one to kind of explain. Position determines like like there's a specific position 
lot like number field value for things like meditating and focusing key and uh, sitting or sleeping um, standing by default is seven for instance <coughs> so she's just standing right now fighting uh, you can actually this this one's a weird one you can actually make mobiles fight one another by using this uh, so you you can make them fight or at least make them look like they're fighting master uh, you can make them a master of a particular skill. Uh, leader, I don't, I don't think leader really matters. I think clans might use this. Hating, uh, if they're hating, it's you've fled from them, and so they're hating you. This is kind of an old holdover from Dungeons and Dragons. Hunting, hunting is somewhat of the same way. This is part of Pickard's like no follow code. Like they will, like they will hunt you and kill you. Fearing is that they will actually run away from you. The hit die determines like about how much damage they do. Mob damage die. You can see how much damage they do if they hit with their actual physical attacks. Numb attacks. Now this one's an important one if we're building uh, for higher level power levels. Obviously, our Power level 1 waitress doesn't have additional attacks, but maybe one day. Maybe she'll get there. Um, mental state? This does some crazy stuff. Uh, and you can do this to players, actually. Um, and it may, you, I mean, the easiest way I can really explain it is that if you set their mental state, like, the player is insane. And um, unfortunately, it doesn't cause enough... Uh, I think mental state can all, might also be affected by drunkenness, which is still something in the game, believe it or not. Uh, emotional state, I have no idea what this one, I'll be honest. I, I don't know what that one does. Items, this determines how many items that that mob can carry. Uh, weight, uh, year, four, this is just how old are they. This, I don't know if this could ever be useful. Maybe you can figure out a way to, to make it work. Uh, seconds timer, Zenny, uh, again, we don't want her getting killed, she doesn't have any Zenny. And then here are those flags that I was talking about, the act flags. NPC, running, pacifist, prototype. Uh, <coughs> now, all of your, all of your mobiles and all of your items and pretty much everything in your proto area is always automatically going to have the prototype flag. And whenever you're editing a mobile, or whenever you're editing an object, or a room, or really anything, it has to have the prototype flag for you to be able to make changes. And it, these, for new areas, once you install the area, it will automatically remove the prototype flag from everything in the area. So you don't have to worry about removing this automatically for yourself. Um, affected by, this is like if you want to give them super safe or if you want to give them like flags for instance power level that one's pretty self-explanatory and then we've got numb fighting short description long description body parts uh, there's fusion flags I have never seen an actual fusion mob made in the game but maybe I'm just not being inventive enough maybe you can figure out some way to make that interesting I imagine for mobs it's not super useful though Alright, so we've, we have made our little waitress. Here she is. Here's Talia. Now, how do we make Talia into more than just a waitress? You know, she's, she's a nice little mobile. She's going to be running around, but we, we, we don't want to do just that. That's, that's boring. That, that's, we, we can do better than that, right? So, she's a waitress. She should probably be serving drinks, right? To our players. like, Or at least asking them if they'd like a drink. So, we're going to go ahead and add a program to our waitress. We're going to MP Edit. <coughs> so, I, I think that MP Edit probably stands for Mobile Program Edit. It's the easiest way that I can simplify that for you. Mobile program edit, MP edit, and we're going to MP it to Laya. She's the subject, she's the mobile that we're trying to edit here. And then we're going to add, so you can add or you can remove a program, right? So 
she doesn't have any programs right now to remove, but we want to add a program to Talia. And we're going to add a greet program. So she's going to greet the player or whenever she, whenever and the greet program whenever someone enters the room with this mob uh and we're going to designate whether or not they're a PC or not. You will see why. Uh so we're going to add a greet and we're going to do we're not going to do a greet 100. Now normally if you do a greet 100 that means every single time that somebody enters the room with Talia, she's always going this program is always going to fire, right? So instead, we're going to we're going to shorten that down because Talia is a busy woman. She can't be asking everybody what their drinks are. Like there's a, there's a bartender for that sort of thing. But, you know, maybe every 15%. Now this kind of percent base. So, let's say 15% of the time if you run into a room with Talia, she's going to do this. So, she's going to say, welcome to the root, welcome to the tavern, can I get you a drink? And again, I'm adding some color codes here. Now, why am I, uh, we'll actually have her, she will wave or let's have her smile we'll have her smile at character now this little symbol right here again you're your new builder you might not know what this means this the dollar sign in this is a variable and this variable means the whoever has triggered or who has who's triggered the the program so for instance in this case it's always going to be a player character right so it's always going to be someone on our mud one of our players for our mud because the, it's not going to trigger on everybody um but we need we actually need to specify that don't we so she's she wants to smile at everybody so we need to make sure that she's only smiling at our players right so this is our first kind of if check. Is PC. And again, you see the see the little dollar sign in is PC. So player character is is player character. And if that's true, then she's going to smile and say, "Welcome to the tavern. Can I get you a drink?" Else, actually, we'll we'll do it this way. If is NPC, so if if they're an NPC, then she's not going to do anything. Else, so if they are a PC, then she will smile and say, "Welcome to the tavern. Can I get you a drink?" And then that's the end of that if chip. So end if. So let's go ahead and copy this. <coughs> and as you can see here on the screen, now that we've just sent that in there if is NPC it creates these lines and then we always want to do that slash L to just double check that this is what we want to we want to put and then slash s to save this is the same as your G notes and now we need to we're gonna go ahead and check that program we're gonna make sure that it actually went on to the the NPC that we wanted to go on to so we're gonna use what's called MP stat, so mobile program statistics, and then we designate who we're MP statting. So it's in this case it's Talia, and if we MP stat Talia, we're gonna see that our greet program of fifteen percent is gonna trigger. Easy, right? So we've created a waitress. We've given her a greet program where she greets the players. And 
The next thing that we need to do, like we ask them, we're having her ask the players if she if they want a drink. So we need something we need something to happen if they say yes. Right? So if they say if they say yes or no, can I can I get a drink? So the first thing that we need to do is actually create the drink that Talia is going to give them, right? So let's go back to let's go back to the to the game real fast. We want to make sure what our objects are. So if we type O list, object list, and again we're not going to go too deep into objects right now, but we do need to create this drink. Now I've created several drinks already. Um, and you can see them here. One is the Gold Dust Ale. This one. And one is a shot of Fire Song Whiskey. So, uh, you guys don't really need to know this, but the, the Gold Dust Ale costs 5000 Pretty sure. So, so, they need to have at least... 5,000 gold to be able to, to buy that gold dust ale, right? So let's type help if checks because we need to we need to lie at the check to make sure that they actually have that much gold. So you can see right here this if check. Oh. So if gold amount, number of gold, you go, right? So and with some of these if checks we can even get a little bit more specific a little bit more specific. So we can type something like help gold amount and maybe if we're lucky. Yeah, so unfortunately there there isn't uh another help file for that one. Um but if we were choose a different one, let's try help strength, for instance. So if we type in help strength, this, well actually that's, uh, okay, that was not a great example. Let's do if checks to help Oh, here we go. If check gold AMT. All right, so here we go. Here it is. So if check gold AMT. So if gold, and then it designates, uh, designates the who the check is referencing is greater than equal to we'll show you some symbols, then this fires. So let's go ahead and just go back to our capture window here. So, <coughs> first thing we have to do is add a, a program. So, MP edit Talia add speech. So, we're, we're adding a speech program now because if they say drink, if we say the, the word that we kind of highlighted in that red color, if they say the word drink, and we're putting those little um, not parentheses, uh, quotation marks, quotes around it, uh, so that it's specific to this word drink. They have to say the word drink for this to fire. So if they say the word drink, then if gold amount, and then again, the character is greater than or equal to 5,000 then Talia is going to nod at them. She's going to MP force, so mobile program force, the player, again, this symbol, this little uh, dollar sign and lowercase n, uh, means this, this is a variable that means the player to give Talia, and a re this is a good, this is a reason why you want to have your mobiles have specific names like this. 
5,000 zenny. And now, so the player gives them 5,000 zenny, and then we're going to MP Echo, so Mobile Program Echo, and this is going to create kind of a, uh, a little short scene here. Again, we're, we're going to use a color code, and we're going to show Talia going and getting the drink. So, Talia to the bar, reaching counter. glass that she beneath the now I'm having to <laughs> having to do a little bit of writing here uh, that she's going to put beneath the tap tap of a keg a Golden, golden uh, liquor fills the pint glass, and she returns in hand. And then and D because we want to close that, right? We don't want any color bleed. And then she's going to load that item. And again, let's go ahead and go back to the uh, the game itself and make sure what the item V number for that is. And it is 50,011. So she's going to load 50,011. And we're going to have her load it into their inventory. Now, the reason that you want to do this is because if the player, for any reason, has too many items in their inventory, then they will not receive the item, and then Talia will be stuck with that item in her inventory, which will fill it up. Now, uh, <coughs> seems crazy. You'd never think that that would happen, but it's, it's like monkeys and typewriters, man. They're... Eventually, you're going to get Shakespeare. You're going to get the Shakespeare of stupidity, and it's going to happen. It's going to happen so many times as a builder. You're 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 going to be in breathtaking awe of just how how people will break your areas. So she's she's loaded this item directly into their inventory. Let's go ahead and have her MP echo that she hands it to him. So to laugh. And we're going to MP echo at. So see the difference there? So this means that this MP echo is specifically going at, and then the subject. <coughs> hands you the drink. Now look at the difference between this. In the first section, when I'm MP echoing, the subject matter here, it, it there's... The subject is Talia, right? Like, this is what she is doing. This is... Anybody in the room would read this the same way. But when we MP echo at that Talia hands you a drink, you the drink, well, the other people are not you. So we need to MP echo around, right? So MP echo around the subject. To Laya hands the subject again the the character pint and I'm just adding some color codes to make this nice and pretty <coughs> right. So she's done that. And then she's going to MP force the player to type the command inventory so that they see that they have the pint in their hands. Okay. Now else, so we, we finish this. So if if the player has 5,000 gold and they say drink, 
then Talia is going to go get that drink, and then she's going to hand it to the player. But if they don't have 5,000 gold, she's going to sigh, shake her head, and say, All right, so she's going to sigh, shake, say, Honey, the drinks aren't free. Come back when you got some Zenny sugar. Well, we'll, we'll take out the honey in the first part. Well, this kind of gives her a little bit of character, right? Like, the drinks, we should probably, we can give her a little bit more of a, of a slang here. The drinks, the drinks aren't free. The drinks ain't free. So she says, the drinks ain't free. Come back when you got some zenny sugar. And then she will... Alright. So, and that's going to be the end of our if. Now, we've... That's a pretty that's a pretty complicated program for just an NPC like a waitress, right? That's actually pretty in depth. We're gonna go ahead and add that to Talia. And again, if you write it out in this little notepad file, all you have to do is copy and paste it, and here it is. That's that entire program already in the game, ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and save that, and then we're going to MP stat to Laya. And you can see, right now she has a Greek program, about 15. Uh, she checks whether or not it's an NPC. If it's not, she smiles at them, welcomes them to the tavern, asks if they want a drink. If they say they want a drink, and they have the gold, then she's going to go get them that drink, and then she's going to bring it back to them and hand it to them. Otherwise, if they don't have enough money, She's going to tell them that the drinks aren't free and to come back when they have some zenny. And then she's going to head off to another table. So th just something as small as a waitress in a tavern, like you can, you can add all of this. Now, so we've, we've made an NPC. We've made our first if checks. And, and we can do even more than that. Again, we're, we're kind of trying to... We're not trying to just create areas like we've always created in the past... We want to make new and better areas. We want to make areas that are alive, that, that have a lot going on, right? We want we want the world to be something that you can interact with. So we're going to give Talia just a few more simple things to, to make her stand out, that she's a, a real character, that she is alive and breathing in our make-believe little world. And, you know, the the players, the people who are going to be playing Dragon Ball Infinity, they might not ever notice this program with Talia. They may never know that you can actually tell Talia that you want a drink and that she'll bring you a drink. Um, but it's it's there in the game and it adds it adds a level of depth and we're going to I'm going to show you a few more little things that we can do to add a little bit more depth. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and go a little bit further down on our notepad file just to differentiate where one program begins and one program ends. Uh, so the next thing we want to do is we just, we just want some echoes that uh, somebody might see whenever they're running around in this tavern and Talia's, you know, again, Talia's going to be moving around really fast because she has that running flag. So we want to, we want to have some echoes that she she makes as she's kind of furiously going through this tavern. So we're going to MP edit to Laya. We're going to add Rand. Now Rand means random. And when you add it to a mob like this, it pretty much fires just about every second in the game. So whenever you add a program like what I'm about to make, you, you want to give it a pretty low chance because it's just going to be going off and off and off and off and off over and over and over and over again. 
So we're actually just going to make it an, an, a random one. And believe me, if with this thing going off every second, it'll happen a lot more often than you'd think. So we've got this random one chance. Now, we don't want to just create like one thing. We want to create several things that Talia might do whenever this program fires. So we're going to create a another random chance and we're going to give it, let's say it's a 10% chance that Talia is going to, uh, and again, these are just going to be like echoes that happen in the background. They don't necessarily have to interact with the player. Uh, they can just be something that the player sees whenever Talia is around. So we're going to have an empty echo that, um, Talia gets into a scuffle with one of the Saiyan, and you don't need to know this, but in this particular tavern right now, there's going to be more Saiyans later on. But Talia gets into a scuffle with one of the Saiyans in the tavern, slaps, causing a Causing a table bust into laughter. So, you know, she's being harassed at this bar, right? And again, I'm using the and D. Anytime that we want to use color codes, we always end it in and D. You're gonna you're gonna hear that so many times, it's gonna be burned into your brain. Um she's being harassed by some of the Saiyans in the bar and she has to slap one of them. Alright? So that first one is a random chance. So if rand 10, so if random 10, then you get this echo where Talia is being harassed. Else, if rand, and we'll do another 10, then uh, Talia will sigh and say, And she'll just say, I knew I should have had someone cover my shift today. Simple, right? And then else, if ran, here's another 10. <coughs> uh, we'll say that um, to lie. Uh, <clears throat> Ty counts the Zinni bills All right, so Ty counts the Zinni bills in her apron. You know, she's a waitress. She's been having people pay her in Zinni all night, and now she's kind of taking a moment. So Ty takes a moment to count. We want to try to use the best grammar that we can, the best punctuation that we can, and we, you know, this, this is a text based game. We want to be kind of careful. So Ty takes a moment to count the Zinni bills in her apron. All right, else, and this will be our last one for Talia. Uh, so let's make it a good one. So if if all the other ones don't fire, this is going to be the default one. This is going to be the probably the most the one that's going to happen the most often, right? So we need to make it kind of a little bit more. Uh, we'll just what she's doing, right? So MP echo. Talia moves. Bar moves from from one table bar and then return filled with pint of gold dust gold dust. Alright, so this is kind of a. Uh, so 
This one also lets people know that there's gold dust ale to be found, which is actually kind of important for the area later on. You don't need to know that. But um, and that she serves drinks, right? So that's this is everything that we need. Now we now have more than just one if check in this in this program. We've got three of them. So any time you have an if check, you have to have a corresponding end if. Because if you don't end the if, it's going to create bugs on the game. So we're going to go ahead, highlight that, copy it. I'm going to go back to the game. And again, we just copy and paste it right into the game. And there it is. Easy. Simple. And I'm just going to stand here for just a moment, and I'm going to show you just how fast, just how quickly uh, that if rand one that we just added is going to is going to trigger. Because I, I believe, even though she's prototype, she should still trigger. We won't wait too long. Maybe she will. Maybe she won't. Okay, we won't drag the video out just to just to see that happen, but even as a prototype, she should still trigger those that you can kind of see them firing and going off. But that's it, guys. <coughs> now, there's there's a lot of commands when it comes to MSET. I'm just going to show you kind of some of the default syntaxes here. When we type MSET into the game, you're going to get the syntax itself, inset, and then the victim, the field, and the value. There are a ton of fields for insetting. Um, some of the stuff is really buried deep in the code, like body parts. You know, there was a point in the game where we were considering, like, you being able to actually target specific body parts, and then there's old stuff that doesn't really matter, like saving throws um, <coughs> or languages. Um, there's a lot to to work with here and you know take a look at some of these figure out how how can you how can you use these to your advantage how can you use these to create unique mobs in the game and then our other program of course was MP edit and if you remember from our first 101 video our edit room edit so similarly we have MP edit, so mobile program edit, and so the syntax for that one is MP edit, the victim, the command, the number, the program, the value. This is probably one of the most complicated commands as a builder, and you're going to be using this one more than, you're going to be using these two probably more than any other, and these are most likely the most important ones in terms of creating real living, breathing areas that players are going to eventually be going through. So, I hope that you guys had fun and this was useful. Um, I know again that for a lot of our a lot of our experienced builders, I'm not going over any kind of new ground uh, for you guys. But for those of you that maybe new that have never built anything in your life, maybe just seeing somebody go through it and make something as simple as our waitress to let to lie up can give you some ideas and help you understand how it how it can be done. So I've been your DBI admin Eichenbaum guys, and I will see you guys later.